Drop some out. What's up, people? It's your man, Pepe Alfonso, the Alpha Man himself. Let's have a little sit down, a little smoke session. I'm gonna answer a couple questions. Enjoy the uh, the ambiance. Dub set, well shit. Yeah. Shit like that. Okay. So to my understanding you are dropping a project soon, right? Correct. Can you tell me what the name of the project is and how you came up with the name? Uh, Alright, so the name of the project is Audio Cartel. Um, I, I run an audio cartel. Um, the way we release music or the way I release music, um, you know, is, is in reference to the way, you know, uh, kilos were dropped off into the United States during about the 80s and, you know, early, 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 early um, 80s and uh, throughout the 80s, actually, to be honest. Um, in the 70s, those movements and stuff like that um, influenced and uh, ideal um, stems from uh, uh, artists who's actually still pretty pretty relevant and probably in the industry as we speak um, and just um, taking a page out of his book and how he kind of conducts and does um, his releases um, and a few phrases that he has used in referring to being, you know, like an audio dope dealer um, and kind of seeing that, you know, I'm one of those type of um, recording artists as well um, that can click off um, eight to 10 to 15 songs in, in a session and, uh, and keep it pushing and release more music and continue to go. So um, a stamp that I'd like to take on and to make my impact and make my mark in a statement and name, you know, um, Alpha World is an audio cartel. Um, we stem from the East Coast out of New York and um, we do our best to hit every dock on every coast. Okay. Um, how many, if you can say, how many tracks are to be expected on this project? Um... Expected, you should get like a good 17 solid songs outside of theatrics and such. Um, yeah, I, I think this was kind of one of my more uh, full embodied ideals and projects. Um, but uh, nonetheless, still as potent as, you know, any of the other stuff that I've released as well. Mm -hmm. So curious, do you think that your sound is different than what's out right now? And if so, how so? Um, I would say so. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a, or I, mean, I say lucky, I'm blessed enough to have a producer um, who creates uh, music the way that I can lyrically produce as well. Um, and a sound that is heavily influenced by like more so instruments um, than to so say a genre. Um, I think that my context in which I speak on definitely sets me apart. Um, I also think just my um, 
aesthetic is it it may mimic or impersonate um, certain styles, but I don't think it's it's very much anything that you're gonna see or um, expect from what you see in artists, so to say, in the mainstream. Um, I think a lot of the packaging deal has a lot to play into how um, your audience receives it. Um, but I, I think that the, yeah, the context in which I, I give, the sound in which I deliver, um, how much I give, um, I think all those things set me apart from anybody who's doing music right now. Um, I have a sound that can compete with the top of the top. Um, I'm in no short of supply, so to say. So I feel like that's those are things that set me apart. I have a catalog. Um, this will be my 33rd release. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have any goals to complete by the end of the year when it comes to your music? No. No. Um, I never create with an intent to have like a, a goal or a set or a number or whatever. I think the first time that I had did something like that was probably like two years ago um, where I was like, I'm going to do a project every month. Um, and that was like the goal. But I think right now I'm just in a creative space of doing things that come naturally. Um, I'm in a, a, a mental space where um, if it if it hits correctly or if it sits well with my spirit, I immediately harp on it. Um, but I don't ever move with a a goal to put a number or to put a um, to reach for a title you know I just I really go into it with a creative mind frame and, and just and allow the music to connect with like I said my spirit and allow myself to elaborate um are you going to drop any more projects after this one? Are you going to take me and take a break? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're going to drop more music. Of course you're going to drop more music. I'm always going to drop music. Are you already working on something new? Potentially. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I am, I'm actually in the process of... Um, I'm actually working on two projects right now. Um, both my producers are um, advantageously working, um, especially S. Dot. He is always sending me stuff. Um, Bernard is he? He's like one of those people that I could just ask, like, "Yo, I need a pack," and he's like, "Bet, give me a minute," and he sends me some stuff. So. Um, they both have um, been very, very um, instrumental, <laughs> no pun intended, in my um, pursuit um, for, you know, just to be one of the most revered uh, recording artists. Um, so, no names, no titles, no track amounts, concepts yet. Um, but we're working. Definitely two projects. One will be headhunted by uh, S. Dot. The other will be uh, a Bernard special. Um, we'll have some features, I believe, so throughout there. Uh, I've been working with a few new um, good people. Um, obviously, bring back some some uh, already established relationships. Um, but yeah, always working. Always, 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 always working. How long have you been working with Estra and Bernard? Um, shit. 
It'll be a. It's been a year. We we've, we've been attacking this for a year now. Um, my first project with Bernard was clandestine, and that was at the top of last year. Um, and we rattled off, I think, four or five other projects. Yeah, between now and then. Um, Steven, same thing. Um, I think our relationship's coming up to about a year at this point, and um, it's only getting better. Um, yeah. yeah, it really is. Like, uh, it, it's only getting better. There's a funny story behind the relationship between me and that, but I'll save that for another time. Okay. Mm. Um, who are your top five influences? Top five influences. Mm -hmm. Like overall or currently like that are like still in music or like overall? Both. Um, overall, a uh, big influence I'll go down this would be like, um, Jay-Z, Method Man, Busta Rhymes, um, early Kanye West, um, yeah, and you can probably throw anybody else who's probably been relevant at that point, uh, Ludacris is definitely one of my, like, favorites growing up, I will not sit here and say he wasn't, um, Right now, <clears throat> heavily influenced uh, by currency. Um, not sure exactly why or what it is, but definitely like the OG for me right now. Um, just studying him very much, his business aspect, um, his, uh, just his craft aspect, uh, and and more so learning from what he's been successful at, um, how he's been successful, and the way he's become successful, uh, as as far as just remaining um, true to himself, um, independent in his work, uh, and being the head of the spear in all of his ventures. Um, so just definitely influential there. Um, Dave East would be another person who's super influential. Um, he has a knack, in my opinion, um, for um, like super super high paced of delivery, um, where he's he finds these pockets and he's able to to chop certain vernaculars into those spaces. And um, but then on top of that, there's always the songs where he's just speaking raw and real. Um, Surprisingly, Chris Brown, and understand this portion of it. It it's more so because of the sound quality that he creates. He's not afraid to jump back and forth between uh, a techno or a ballad, and I think that's something that um, just shows the wide delivery. Uh, wide, excuse me. Um, a, a wide like genre that he can play within um, but he still finds a way to maintain his uh, identity and who he is and how he does things and how it's um, his way of stuff so I think that's something that's influential on me um, being that like you can give me really much any beat um, any sound and I will find a way to um, create something from it that will be um, uh, whether it be a bridge piece between songs, um, an actual song, um, who knows? But like, just be able to have that freedom in the creativity process is something that I always liked about Chris Brown. He's always been able to, especially as he's continued to go through his uh, evolution, he's seemingly continuing to just try different things and fit into different spaces. Um, outside of those two, I will even go back and say that Jay-Z is still very influential.
change. Why? Um, because he's managing to stay relevant um, years down the line, um, even after have only releasing his 13th studio album. And it's been a couple years since that, but he still manages to stay um, within his realm of hip hop, um, whether it's helping others, uh, whether it's creating the now known Rock Nation label um, on top of uh, venturing into sports and those type of things. Um, just the way he's continued to um, take his music <clears throat> or how he took music and used it as a catalyst to put him in position to do other things business-wise, um, as well as to create generational wealth for his family. Um, among other things, but definitely influential on that tip. And last but not least, Childish Gambino. I'm sorry. <laughs> Brief intermission. Um, where were we? You were going to list your last artist of your top five. For uh, current. Current top five. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, Childish Gambino. Um... I've I've been a huge fan of Childish Gambino since his I Am Not a Rapper series. Um, just his general approach to music as well. Um, uh, it, it's un, it's unorthodox. Um, however, it seems to have this um, I don't want to say home feeling, but like it, it's they always seem to align when whatever with whatever he's doing and how his sound and sonically. Um, it's always pleasing. Um, and as well as his, obviously, back uh, work or backlog, so to say, with writing um, and, and being writers for shows and being an actor and um, all of those things. You know what I mean? Like, he's super someone um, that I would, I would definitely um, consider as someone who I would like to emulate, um, uh, as well as the other four people that I mentioned. Um, uh, and an honorable mention, I'm gonna say, has to be like definitely um, Wiz Khalifa and Nipsey Hussle. Um, those two are definitely two people who um, I, I see likeness in as just far as just how they carry themselves um, and they handle their day to day things. So. Uh, growing up, what kind of music uh, did you listen to, and does that have any influence on your sound? Um, I listened to everything when I was growing up. I didn't really have a specific that I was like, oh, this is all I listened to. Um, um, yes, I think having that wide range of music uh, appetite definitely plays into how I um, appreciate what music uh, S. Dot and Bernard sent me. Um, I listened to everything from, um, like I said, Method Man, Busta Rhymes, um, to even out all the way out there to like Backstreet Boys and In Sync, um, uh, Panic at the Disco. Um, even going down to as I got older, going through college, I started listening to or I got exposed to country music. Um, and listening to like Jason Aldean, um, Florida Georgia Line, um, uh, Shania Twain, even going backwards, you know what I mean? Just being able to um, be open to it. And I think a big portion of that was like being raised in church, you know what I mean? Growing up Brack, Baptist, um, always, my parents were always playing gospel music. Um, it, it, I think that was a great foundation as far as just like being okay with um, the sound that that is a good like you know how the spirit connects with the sound and music and, and those kind of things so I think that was that that played a major part into um, just being open when it came down to music and not being so narrow minded in, in um, instruments and sounds and sonic. Okay, well, we're going to close it out. So I want to say thank you for coming in and 
you yeah. know, speaking on yourself and your music. Thanks. Um, is there anything that you'd like to say um, to like your fans or people to expect or people you'd like to shout out or anything? Um, shout out the whole dub set, man. Um, there's a lot of big things going on right now. Uh, just shout out 914 right now. Um, go get the project. There's tons of other stuff that's out there as well. Um, Audio Cartel, that's, you know, that's the latest. If you're probably watching this by now, it's more than likely out. Um, go shop. You know what I mean? Go get you some comfy clothes. We just released a whole new summer collection of t-shirts. A um, couple of other new long sleeves, still comfy. You know what I mean? The leisure wear. Um, yeah. And um, take care of yourself. <laughs> what more can I ask for you to do? That was positive interaction.